Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Nice to meet you again in my last presentation about optimization with single variable case. I will focus on explaining some of the applications. There are only two examples that I will cover, however. First is about profit maximization and second is about optimal timing. Okay, let's try the first case about profit maximization. The optimization goes as follow. First, it is clear that the objective is to maximize profit. Since profit is the objective, then profit function is our objective function. With profit is only affected by output level, for instance, optimization will be about satisfying the first and the second order condition. Now, let's take a look at the example. Given the following revenue and cost function, the objective function is this. It is a single variable case of optimizations since our objective, P, only has one choice variable, Q. The first order condition requires us to equalize the first derivative of the objective function to zero, like this. As a result, we now have two critical values here. Which critical value or output level that could maximize the profit? Now, we just have to check the second order condition. We just need to evaluate the second derivatives at the two critical values. So here, we have the second derivatives evaluated at Q1 and Q2. Obviously, Q2 is the one that maximizes the profit because the value of the second derivative evaluated at Q2 is negative. Therefore, total output or Q that firm needs to produce is 36.5 unit and it will give maximum profit of 16,000 something for the firm. Let's now turn our attention to the second case about optimal timing. From its name, can you guess, is time here the objective or the choice variable? We may need to decide when is the best time to travel, for instance, or how long we should keep our gold before we sell it, or in another case, how long we should grow timber before we cut and sell the timber. So optimal timing is about finding the best time, what for, to achieve or to get certain benefit. Therefore, time here is the choice variable, whereas the objective is to maximize the benefit. Then again, we have the optimization step and information as follow. First, now the objective is to maximize certain benefit. Since benefit is the objective, then benefit function is our objective function. With benefit is only affected by time in our case, optimization again will be about satisfying the first and the second order condition for the single variable case optimization. Now, let's take a look at the example. Suppose that we are trying to find the optimal time for storing gold. The benefit, of course, is the value of gold when we eventually sell it. But since the sales is most likely in the future, it is best to value the gold in every possible selling time in present value. If value of gold is growing continuously following this function, where V and T are the value of gold and time in year respectively, then we can express the present value represented by A like this. We just multiply the gold value in the future V with the discount refactor that in this continuous case is E power by minus RT, and R here is the continuous discount rate. Substituting our V function to A, then we get the complete objective functions like this. The first order condition requires us to equalize the first derivative of the objective functions to zero like this. In the next slide, we will figure it out how the resulting first derivative is like this. Since A or the present value of gold cannot be zero, then the first derivative can only be zero if and only if the expression inside the parentheses is zero. So we're going to have this critical value of T and it will be equal to 25 years if the discount rate is 10%, uh, for instance. Then, the last thing that we need to find out is the second order sufficient condition. To ensure our T start would really maximize the benefit or the present value of gold. 
This second derivative here is obtained using the UV formula. Since the first derivative is zero from our previous calculation, then the second derivative is now represented by this equation. We know the sign for each expression here. Therefore, we can prove that the second derivative must be negative. With negative second derivative, 25 years of gold storage will give the maximum present value of gold when it is sold. The present value is uh, A max, which is equal to 900.17 unit value. Okay, before closing my presentation, I would like to show how, given this objective function, we can come up with this first derivative and accordingly get the T optimum. To find this first derivative, we can find it directly using chain rule. Look, this expression here is similar to this. And the rest is just an ordinary derivative, bearing in mind that R is a constant. Therefore, we get this, and since the first expression is equal to A, then we can replace it with A, so at the end, we have this result. We can also use the natural logarithmic theorem to find the first derivative of AT. Look, we can convert the function first to a natural logarithmic function like this, then find this first derivative. Of course, it's not the end, because what we're looking for is the A per DT, not D ln A per DT. But we know that d ln a is d a per a, so that we get this equation. And eventually, we get the first derivative of a, which is exactly the same with the previous result. Now, how to find the t prime, the t star? Quite simple, since a t cannot be zero, so the only way to make the first derivative equal zero is by omitting a and concerns only to the expression inside the parentheses. By a little modification, then we can come up with the T start express like this. Okay, that's all about optimization with single variable case that I can explain at the moment. Hopefully now you can understand and implement the concept in any other application and context. Thank you very much for the attention. See you again in different video and different topic of basic math for economics and business. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.